Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. In the next couple videos, I'm gonna show you how to prune an overgrown vineyard. What I think I'm gonna do, first of all, we'll walk down to the end of this row and then come back up this row and just kind of assess things, but Right off the bat, I can see, like right here, we have a bull cane running down and way out to there, that's, I don't know, 12 feet. Got some major cane to pull out of here. Well, all of them aren't that bad, but there is some major bull canes in here. This one right here, where does that go? Oh, it goes from back there all the way up to here. That's 12 feet as well. Yeah, this is gonna take a while. I have two days to work on this and then it's gonna snow and get real cold again. And I'll be off for a few days and then I'm gonna have to come back to it after that. I think this is gonna take maybe four days if I'm lucky three days but yeah this is pretty bad once I get everything pruned I'm gonna just toss it on the ground I gotta go back and pick it up and we're gonna have a big fire up by where the gator is there I still have a bunch of prunings from last year so this is gonna be a lot to add to it yeah you can see this bull cane it starts out over there and ends way back here and it was touching the ground once i get everything pruned in here i'm going to spray these real quick with dormant oil when the temperature is right and then as soon as the weeds start popping up i got to get in here and take care of those as well a lot of catch up to do this year that first roll was much worse than the second row. It's likely because it's an end row and gets more light, but this one is nowhere near as bad. Still lots of bull cane all over the place and a lot to deal with, but this will be easier than that one. So that special case right there is gonna definitely take a while. Another thing to note is that this time of year, depending on where the sun is, I'll be wanting to work on this side so I don't have the sun in my face, but a little bit later, I'm gonna have to work on the other side. So I'll go down the back side of a row and then come over and go down the back side of the next row. Yeah, we got some slippage here. I'm gonna have to fix that as well. Look at this vine, it's bent way down. Ah, a lot of work. I'm gonna have to go get a players for that. Okay, all right. I'm gonna grab my pruning shears and I'll get back with you after I get down to the end of this row or somewhere around there. Okay, it's the next day and I got all of row A done and half a row C. We're gonna go over there to where I left off in just a minute thought I would give you a look at what I've done so far. Wherever there's a blue flag, that means there's a cordon that needs to be replaced. This right here was supposed to be the replacement cordon for this, but it didn't do very well last year. I'm going to have to take one of the shoots off of this and run it along the line. On this one, we have the replacement cordon right here and it goes all the way to the end. Both of these are gonna live together for this year, and next year I'll cut off the old one. And on this one right here, you could see the replacement here. It may not be alive past this point, but no big deal. We'll start with this bud right here and continue that. This vineyard is right at the point where some of these cordons are getting old and the spurs are dying back. So this is a good time to replace cordons if need be. This one goes from a water chute down there up 
and across and a lot of that was done as I was pruning last year. This just had a little flag on it because this was a heavy producer. I'm going to be coming in here, oh, probably in a week or two. We're going to have snow tomorrow and the day after, so I won't be in here. But when I come back, all of these that slip down, this should be up to here. But to do that, I have to disconnect all of the vines from the line and just tie them loosely onto their support rods, get them all loosened up, move these up where they need to be, and then tighten the wire at the end. Then come back and most of these just need to be kind of twisted over the wire. They don't need to be tied. Replacement cordon right here. This one here, you can tell this one struggled as well. This whole vine might need to be swapped out at some point because it doesn't look like it's doing all that well. Well, this isn't bad. Yeah, we'll see. As soon as this starts sprouting, I'm going to mark any place that needs a new cordon next year. This is the new cordon for right here. And this extra long one, once this grows onto the vine, I'll cut this one back here where it needs to be. And the new one from here will go up to here. This entire vine was cut back at the ground, and from the looks of these, these look like they're a couple years old, both of these, but these, these canes right here, the new cordons, these are only one year old. This will probably get a lot of fruit this coming year. Another replacement here. This is, uh, looks like a two year old replacement, but yeah, this is a two year old replacement. All right, I'm back to where I left off yesterday and I'll show you how I take care of these pretty well overgrown vines. These just missed a bunch of hedging last year, so they're not super bad. If they miss a couple years, they can get really bad. I'll try to tell you how to take care of those as well, but for today, we're just gonna concentrate on what's here. This one right here has a replacement cordon, so I'll show you how I deal with that. And what we'll do is go from where I left off and we'll finish with the vine that has the replacement cordon. So let's dig into it and get this cleaned out here. As you can see from this stuff that's already been pruned, nothing is longer than like two, three inches past the original spur. With that in mind, we can hack off a whole bunch of stuff that's in the way and get closer to the vine so we can see what we're doing. I mentioned that replacement cordon down there. I have to keep looking ahead to see if there's a replacement cordon because if there is, I can't just cut willy-nilly. I have to go to that vine and see where the replacement cordon is because like this right here could be a replacement cordon. And if I just go in there and hack stuff off, I might lose my replacement cordon and have to regrow one. So I might lose a year on it. All right. Now I could step right up to the vine and do some more precision pruning. Yeah, this cordon right here is really overgrown. What I want is six spurs. This one only has five. So on one of the spurs, I can leave a few more buds than normal. But ideally, I want six spurs, each spaced about six inches away from each other and I want to keep three buds on each of them. This spur right here has one, two, three, four, five, six canes coming off of it. Way too many. And I like the looks of this bud right here and the buds on this one. These canes right here, the whitish colored ones, 
Some of them might be dead, but none of them look really good. I also want to retain buds as close to the cordon as possible, otherwise your spur will start to get really long. So let's cut some of this stuff off and see what we end up with. First, I'll take off the bottom part there. Take that off. I generally use my pruning shears, but while I have this out here, I had to use this for that big one. And for this big one, this one has a bud right here, and then it has a bud over here. I might want to keep this bud and this bud, and as soon as this starts sprouting, to rub it off. I think I'll do that. And this, I'll just get this out of the way. All right, I think I'm going to take that right there. And there you have it. I have one, two, three buds right there. There's probably another bud right under here. And this one's going to have one right here and right here. So we got plenty of buds there. As soon as the shoots start growing, there's going to be wind damage on a few. And hopefully I can get down in here. And if there's like five shoots coming off of this, hopefully I'll be able to get down here and get rid of a couple of them. Okay, this one right here is a total mess. This is coming from the spur over here and went over the top. That's because I didn't get in here to hedge this. Got a lot of stuff going over the top. Okay, now that we have those gone, we have one, two, three, four, five. These are a lot of tertiary sprouts. Six, seven, eight, nine, like nine of them here. This can definitely just go away. And I believe this whole bottom part, yeah, it looks like I might want to just keep this right here. And this right here, Looks like it'll be a replacement for the missing one here. There's kind of one here, but that's really sickly. This right here is too close to this one, but it'll work. As it grows, I can steer the spur this way a little bit. Okay, so... Take that off right there. I think I'm going to leave that one alone. This is a different spur, but might as well get that taken care of right away. All right, and we'll take off this whole lower part. And these are Corona shears. I'll put a link to them in the description. I use a Corona. This is for all of the mid-sized stuff. This is a real nice shears for that. And I use my Felco for everything else. Trim this up a little bit. And take off that last one. And bada bing, bada boom. We have one bud here that's pointing kind of upwards. Hopefully that doesn't go up. This one's pointing down quite nicely. Same with this one right here. I should have at least three buds or at least three shoots that are aiming in the right direction. Any of them that go straight up, I'll take off. And this next one is kind of an octopus. It's got like nine shoots on it or nine cane from last year's shoots, I should say. And that little cluster does not look that good, so we'll just get rid of it. Trim that up. Then this one over here looks pretty nice. Take this bottom thing off here. And cut that right there. 
this goes up way too high. I think we'll take one bud here. It's got one bud here. They both have basal buds as well, which we'll use as kind of a backup. But a lot of these, like this right here, I believe that came from a basal bud. I really need to get in here and do the second pruning. Once the shoots are, I don't know, six, eight inches long, you should come in and do a second pruning to get rid of excess stuff. Problem with that is, if you get a windstorm the next day and you get everything down to three shoots and the windstorm takes all three of your shoots on a particular spur, then you're screwed. You're not going to get any new ones that year. All right, I'm going to have to do the rest of this from the other side. You could see I still have one, two, three, four, five old canes on here. None of these are staying. So I want to get them cut back as close to the spur as possible. I'm hoping to get all of the basal buds. You could see a basal bud right there. That's going to grow into a shoot and this will just go straight up. And I can just rub that off, but on the other ones, if I can't see where the basal bud is and I don't cut it off, I'll get a lot of extra growth that I don't want because it's just more work down the line. So if I can cut it real close to the spur, I should kill the basal bud. All right, and that's it for that one. While I'm working, I peel off any loose bark. I'm gonna be spraying this with dormant oil in a little while, and I would like the dormant oil to get to the main bark if possible. All right, now this last one here, Just getting rid of that completely and hopefully I didn't leave any buds there but it's possible I don't want any of that stuff that's growing straight up all right I have two cordons done should point out what this is this right here is a replacement spur if something happens to this cordon and I want to replace it, hopefully I could take a shoot from here and run it along the wire during the year and then I'll have my replacement spur. But sometimes I'll take them from the ground. I'll take a sprout that comes up from the ground or a water shoot like this one was or I'll take it from somewhere else and then just cut the vine right at that point. You could see that on the one in the front row there. I cut it right near the ground, took two shoots, got rid of all the old stuff, took two shoots, ran them up, and onto the wire. I have this cordon right here marked for replacement, but it doesn't look like I ran anything for it, and that's probably because it was producing real well. So I believe I'll take this off, but I'm going to wait till this sprouts out and see what it looks like. But if it's producing really well, I could just take this off and wait till it starts to degrade. And while we're here, a little note on this. Yeah, I should probably do it. This is way too leggy going way down to here. And it's going to get in the way of this one here. This right here is probably going to be my new spur. So I really should cut this off right here and allow this to take over. And there you have it. Yeah, this was getting way too leggy. That's already like 8, 10 inches. That fills up the fruiting zone. That would bring the fruiting zone on that particular spur way down here. And the fruiting zone is supposed to be like this top foot right here. I may have had this marked for replacement because these two spurs right here weren't doing well. But there's another bud right there. This does not look very healthy and I don't have a lot of confidence. This spur might end up dying this year. We'll see. All right, 
I'm going to work my way down to that next flag and then show you what I do with a replacement cordon. Okay, that brings us to the vine with the replacement cordon. And what I got to do is go in here and see if I can find what was going to be the replacement. And it appears as though it's this right here. And this comes up and kind of droops over the top. It does not look all that great, but there's nothing else that can do it. So. I'm going to leave this one alone, keep a real good eye on it, because it's easy to get in there and just hack stuff out. So we'll get rid of all this other stuff and then see if this is going to make it. I can see why this cordon was going to be replaced. This is dead out here. This, I may have thought this was dead, but we got a shoot on it last year. So this isn't quite dead. This is okay. This is okay. And then there's just a big blank spot all the way back to here. This looks like it'll get shoots on it. And it looks like I went with something way back here just to get some more fruit off of this. So this definitely could use a new cordon. But this doesn't look all that great. I would like the cordons to have spurs every six inches. And you could tell that this one had it every three. And I had to get rid of a bunch of stuff. The ones with the closely spaced buds like this, and it's like that right here, about three inches. This is a better spacing. This is closer to four, but then it goes to three here. This is not good at all, two inches. And then this is a bull cane that's well, it's close to six inches. What I'm gonna do is take the best looking one out of this, which unfortunately is this one. I'll just cut this off here, cut this off here, do some pruning up, and then I'll lay it on top of the wire and we'll see what happens this year. I'll get fruit off of these spurs and I'll get fruit off of this. There'll be plenty of fruit here. Hopefully this develops correctly and can replace that cordon, but it's possible I may have to take another shoot from say here or here and next year use that one to replace it. We'll see how this one does. Oh, this is actually way too high. I think I'm just going to cut it back to here. And we'll use whatever shoot comes off of here. See how that is. I wasn't real happy with what I had to start with. All right, I'm going to mark this so I don't come in here and get over exuberant and prune it out of here. With this marked like this and this marked as well, I'll know that this is going to be the replacement for this. All right, let's get down to the end of the row and wrap this video up.
All right, I'm gonna go have lunch and rehydrate. Then I'm gonna come back and do the very last row, row E. Well, the last row with the trellis. There's another row after that that's missing a bunch of plants and stuff. That row, I'm gonna be putting in the trellis this year. And with any luck, I'll get that planted as well. Then we'll have six rows next year, but I won't be, but we won't have any fruit or anything on that very last row, maybe a little bit. All right, I will be right back and we'll start on row E. Okay, I'm back from lunch and I'm gonna get going on this last row or row E. We still have two more rows over there to do. I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to record. We have really high gusts of wind like right now i'm trying to stand so that my body blocks the camera but it'll really mess up the audio if it gets to the camera hero 10 is a terrible camera for wind so yeah you could see it right now all right i'm gonna shut up and start pruning and i hope i can get back to you at the end and tell you what i've done in this row When you last saw me, I was working on this vine right here. I believe I had just finished up on this side and I was going to do the outro, but the neighbor here started vacuuming their car and it was just way too noisy. So I decided to go up to the house for a little bit and come back and do the outro. But by then it was raining and getting dark. It is now two days later and it is just freezing out here. I'm not going to be able to get back at this for, oh, probably three or four more days. It's supposed to get really nasty in the next couple of days. So it's going to be a while. But when I do get back, I still have all this stuff to clean up. I still have three more rows to prune. Camera just crashed. 
But anyways, on the next video, I'll try to get some different stuff in. Stuff that I didn't get in on this one. I don't know what that'll be, but it'll come to me when I start doing it. I also need to get this whole place raked out. I went to buy fertilizer today, but they still had their winter hours, so they closed at 11, and I got there at like 11.15. The doors were locked, but I'll be fertilizing, I'll be raking, I'll be doing a whole lot of stuff out here this summer. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you share the video and or give it a like, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.